Later on, Lian Cheng Baiming is seen putting Coco Ming on the bed. She asks what he is trying to do, to which she ponders that this man has been checking the time to urge her to eat cakes just now, which is weird. She tries to get up, but Lian Cheng Baiming jumps on top of her and says, before the end of today, he wants to completely own her. She ponders whether Lian Cheng Baiming is trying to be romantic or if is it just his desire. As he made her suffer so much in the past, and now she doesn't need to be restricted by the agreement, how can she let him achieve what he wishes? Man, don't be foolish, yo! She turns over and tells him she doesn't want this to happen. He asks why not, and says that she better not torture him deliberately. Since today is her birthday, Lian Cheng Baiming says to have a good time together. She says she doesn't want to have it, but the agreement was torn and he can no longer force her now. But he jumps on top of her anyhow, to which he mentions Coco Ming as a girl. It is almost midnight, and why she doesn't want to spend her birthday together with him. As if she is going to bully her again, now that he doesn't respect her, Coco Ming wonders what is the point of being his girlfriend then. Meanwhile, Coco Ming blushes and exaggerates so out of control that she asks to break up right away. Lian Cheng Bei Ming gets really annoyed that she has torn his feelings apart. She, on looking at him, realizes as if she has really annoyed him, because the looks Lian Cheng Bei Ming wards off now are sure to tear her up. Lian Cheng Bei Ming gets up and walks away, while he ponders about Coco Ming, that she asked him to break up when they two just become lovers. But seriously, how dare she mention such words to him? And that this bad woman Coco Ming is really and deliberately torturing him. He walks into the bathroom and takes a shower, when Coco Ming outside is thinking about who really gave in and says that this is really rare. However, when he comes out of it, he sees Coco Ming seated on the bed, yet naked. So he asks her that if she doesn't want to tantalize him, at least wear the clothes and no need to fool around in front of him. Surprisingly, Coco Ming, for the first time, turns to Lian Cheng Baiming without hesitating as she is naked and turns to Lian Cheng Baiming the way she is. More like on purpose, so she could invite him over. Even when Lian Cheng Baiming resists, yet looks at her, he concludes that Coco Ming is doing this on purpose over here. He asks that now it is already 12 o'clock, almost midnight, so what she wants now? And Coco Ming gently responds that she was lying just now. There, Lian Cheng Baiming says to her not to bully him or else he won't stop, and come on top of her again, at first kissing, then moving on to ride it. While there, Coco Ming is deeply immersed in the scene and ponders about her mother who tells her if one cries on their birthday, they will cry the whole year, and if they smile on this day, the coming year will be prosperous for them. Lian Cheng Baiming ponders about spending this first birthday with Coco Ming, like an actual with from body to heart, so he makes sure when he finishes what he wants to do, he may leave Oriental International with Coco Ming and never come back. At the moment, he was just laying with Coco Ming falling asleep. At last, he wonders if let's just forget everything at this place and then move on by starting their new life with each other for the rest of their lives. Whereas on the other side, at the Long's house, the master, uh, Master Long. Yes, he slaps the newspaper he holds on the table and yells, who the hell is the one who wrote something like this? Apparently, the news editor had put the Long family incident on the cover page, which entitled it as the little princess of the Long family claimed to have been a hooker in a nightclub. Even that, it is breaking news that disgraces the Long master pretty much. Moreover, Master Long here is really frustrated with his other dudes who are sitting beside him when he asks them how can they even allow this kind of article to be printed and appear in front of the public? Is this the way they work? Shan Shan, while staying beside him, helps him out and says that at least he should not worry since she is fine. Another man sitting on one sofa there, this white-haired young male, refers to the Master Long as Grandpa and says that the incident was obviously designed by others and the Long family are being focused by co-fewer people. It is not surprising that this happened. 
After investigation, he has found that their boss seems to have a relationship with the Baming family. Another man on another sofa responds as if he is trying to refer to Xiong Baming being the wire puller. Xiong Baming is Master Baming for those who don't know. He replies that he is not sure of that. But in addition, Master Long says that it is true that it can't be Xiong Baming for a fair reason, which is that Shan Shan is the only bloodline left by Xiong Baming's daughter, namely, she is the only legal heir to the Baming family. Hence, it is without any doubt that Shan Shan is important in his heart. How is it possible for him to deal with her? Moreover, he diverts the discussion and tells the boys who seem to be his grandchildren to go and bankrupt this specific newspaper that has published this about Shan Shan Long. He ponders that if it continues like this, Shan Shan will be sadder than his poor little girl. Of course, old man, you will soon realize that. He turns to Shan Shan and tries to calm her down by telling her to stay put and that he will chop the hands off of those who write something like this for the dogs to feed them. She, while holding his hands, responds while making her look down face that Grandpa should let them be because what he has written already is true, and this is not their fault anyhow. She fakely drips tears to gain an impression while saying that she was very poor when she was in the Ming family, so she had to work around it. Not only this, she mentions faithful trust about guaranteeing that she had only sung in the nightclub and nothing she did that was disgraceful. Grandpa, blindly trusting her, says that he already knows about this since his little princess Shan Shan Long is the best girl in the world. He tells her to stop crying as then he will take her to the sea tomorrow to play. However, the other boys sitting there are all deeply evacuated by the thought of Shan Shan Long being a playgirl and fakely impressing their grandfather. Even this white-haired dude asks in return from Shan Shan Long about her relationship with Coco Ming. In the meantime, he ponders about what Shan Shan just said seems to be in, according with the findings of the men sent by the master, but he always felt something was already wrong. She says that Coco Ming was her elder sister in that family. Aunt Fu and Uncle Jinghua lived together two years ago and they lived under the same roof. She expresses Coco Ming's qualities that she is excellent, she studies better and looks more beautiful than her. Meaning Shan Shan, however, she even mentions that Coco Ming is better at singing too. After all this, once again by making a dull face, she mentions that everyone only liked Coco Ming instead of her and favors Coco Ming. Maybe because she is much too outstanding, she even looks down on her after which they are not on good terms with each other. After all, Shan Shan is inferior to Coco Ming in everything because she was adopted. Actually, everything is true, yet the opposite is defined that way. Ha <laughs> ha. The grandpa is sure like a mess. He quickly on hearing this fake sad thing from Shan Shan gets upset on her behalf and tries to relieve her. Even now, when after she stops talking, grandpa says that she is his granddaughter while ponders about Coco Ming who came here earlier and he couldn't judge that Coco Ming is such a nasty one regarding his expectations. He stands up with Shan and tells her to go upstairs to see the many gifts he has for her. He tells the boys to deal with the rumors about Shan Shan Long and the messes in the past as well. He walks past them aided by Shan Shan Long who tries to put herself beside Grandpa every time so she can be the one she wants. After all, we all know her intentions. Meanwhile, this guy out of all says that this Shan Shan is such a liar. He says that he already knows Coco Ming, and she is not the kind of person Shan Shan is expressing. Until the other man speaks up and says not to say things like this in front of others and the appraisal has been taken. So that leaves them questioning about what else can be said. No matter what kind of person Shan Shan Long was in the past, now that she is the only granddaughter of the Long family. However, one of them says that they can do what they want until he is going to have a meeting within the company. The other two walk out asking one another about Grandma's return here. He is told by these guys here in return that Grandma is soon to be seen in a month or two and the course of treatment is about to be complete. If it weren't for their Grandma's serious illness, she wouldn't have been absent for Shan Shan Long's comeback. However, 
Shan Shan Long is not her biological granddaughter. He wonders if it will be scary when she comes back and something happens again. He asks his brother if he really, what to live here? Because what he thinks is that his sister's grandson usually looks at him in the wrong eyes. Sometime later, Shan Long, wearing a hot-looking dress, walks out and teasingly calls out her cousin to come and help him with something. However, he doesn't give her a single F and says to her to shut up. He then goes to sit in his car and substantially ponders about Coco Ming. He wonders about last night when Lian Cheng Beiming personally admitted that Coco Ming is his woman, which really shows that he cares a lot about her, and that girl seems to take care of Shan Shan Long very much. He wonders about Shan Shan Long, who slandered her name decently, so what is all the feast between the two? He takes out his phone after this and tries calling someone. As he ponders that, he will go and check on the current situation of Jing Hua Ming's family. On the other side, Coco Ming is sitting there on the bed as she has just woken up and wondered about the previous night. Bei Ming was inexplicably excited yesterday, and he actually, well, she says this much, and by guess, he either has made her pregnant, or rather, he has done it with her. Lian Cheng Bei Ming comes and asks about how she is feeling and if she thinks she can get up on her own. Bro, what did you do to her? Anyways, he asks Coco Ming if she had a good sleep, and he will take her out to the sea today. And the sea of Oriental International is way better than that of Dongling. So will she join him? Her eyes sparkled with sudden excitement that she would definitely go with him. Lian Cheng Bei Ming picks her up and proceeds to the bathroom, saying that she might be feeling weaker, so he will help wash her face and rinse her mouth. After they get dressed, they walk out to which, surprisingly, Lian Cheng Bei Ming appears standing at the main door entrance. Lian Cheng Bei Ming then asks if he would like to join them as they will have a yacht race today. Later on, we see that Lian Cheng Bei Ming and Coco Ming are both on the rooftop seated inside a helicopter with Lian Cheng Bei Ming accompanying them there. Coco Ming at first is astonished to see that these guys actually go to the beach through helicopter, which is very exaggerated. The pilot asks Miss Coco especially, since she might be the first time here if she is ready to take off with them. So she for once looks out wondering something. Oh, and to no surprise, this pilot is actually Yi Yang himself. Nice. However, as if Coco Ming looked out, we see they Shan Shan Long is coming with that cousin of hers. That is because this is still the Oriental International, and they share the same building yet different apartments on different floors. Anyways, Mr. Long, with his hair flowing off with the wind, looks at Lian Cheng Bei Ming noticing him. Lian Cheng Bei Ming walks out, telling Coco Ming before he jumps out that she stays here while he goes and meets with him for a moment. But Coco Ming instead insists on coming along with him. Mr. Long, on seeing him, asks if he has also participated in the yacht race today, to which Lian Cheng Bei Ming refers to him as Master Long that he wasn't expected to be seen taking interest in it as well. Master Long tells him that the little princess of his family wants to go there, so he merely just keeps her company. Matter of fact, Master had called him and ordered him to be her protector for the day. Upon seeing Coco Ming, young Master Long refers to her and says that Shan Shan Long was a bit naughty the previous night, but since he doesn't know her name. Coco Ming introduces herself to him. After this, the young master Long asks her first if she doesn't mind, and secondly, if he would like to invite her for dinner to oppose an apology. However, Lian Cheng Bei Ming blocks her by saying that there is no need for him to do such a thing when he walks in front of Coco Ming, blocking her to protect them. Moreover, he mentions that since young master Long is here to protect someone, he will do his best not to interfere. They both proceed on their individual helicopters on the roof then to which young master Long looks back at Lian Cheng Bei Ming and ponders that they merely talk with each other. But this Coco King is not the kind of defiant girl Shan Shan Long was describing her as the other day. Even though their relationship, Ye Bei Ming and Coco Ming's relationship is really intriguing. What's more, when the helicopter is about to take off, 
Firstly, we see Shan Shan, Long being hell scared of it, which she tightly holds and annoys her young master Long on being scared. Not only this, she even lays above him to keep herself secure as per her thoughts. But young Master Long doesn't seem to be enjoying this, as he wants to throw her out, but calms himself because the girl is his cousin, not any other. On the other side, Coco Ming is the same scared as Shan Shan, but at least she doesn't overreact about it. However, she calls Lian Cheng Bei Ming to at least hold her if she doesn't get thrown out by the wiggling helicopter. Lian Cheng Bei Ming holds her calmly, rest assured that she is safe and calm. But just then, the helicopter wiggles a bit to which Coco Ming yells out to stop turning this thing around. She refers to Lian Cheng Bei Ming to never let Yi Yang fly a helicopter in the future, as he is really sucking in taking control of this thing. While Lian Cheng Bei Ming is seated in front beside Yi Yang, he sits there calmly, and Yi Yang here ponders about many people paying him to let him perform figure gliding for them, now that he drives poorly because he is told to do so. Anyways, you will see sooner what this means. Lian Cheng Bei Ming holds Coco Ming tight then, after some time. He says in a hinting tone that the airflow in front is relatively stable, and the ride shouldn't be bumpy anymore. Coco Ming hesitates, yet she feels more relaxed that he is saying it right, because it sure seems to stop swaying. Moreover, when they reach the island, Coco Ming looks down and enthusiastically looks at the magnificent view. She compliments it to Lian Cheng Bei Ming, who at first observes her, and then refers to her as she is more beautiful than the view. However, he asks if she wants to enjoy helicopter jumping. Now, because they have arrived at the place, it could be another hinting tone, but in fact, it is not when Yi Yang asks Miss Coco to hold on because now they will be landing. So if it gets bumpy again, she better take care of herself. Lian Cheng Bei Ming, in addition, says to Coco Ming that she should hold her boss tightly or else she will suffer again. At first, Coco Ming now realizes to some extent that they all intend to play some tricks on her, because otherwise, it shouldn't be this much like this. However, she ponders about why she feels like getting trapped. Lian Cheng Bei Ming invites her to come to her and let him hold her in his arms. As soon as she does, she notices that the helicopter is going down very easily and nothing is going on. So what is all the fuss about? This way she notices that she was already wondering why it was so scary to take a helicopter as if it was a roller coaster or something to which she yells out to the little rascals, like Lian Cheng Bei Ming, who intends to play with her on purpose. Afterwards, the helicopter lands on the land, and Lian Cheng Bei Ming playfully refers to Yi Yang, not to tease Miss Coco and not make fun of her anymore, otherwise he will have to get his butt out of here. But now that Coco Ming knows the real fact, she intends to call Lian Cheng Bei Ming the shameless, who made Yi Yang the scapegoat. Lian Cheng Bei Ming, on approaching Coco Ming, wonders that it seems Coco Ming is still angry, but why does he feel she is getting more and more arrogant after he gave her the agreement independence? And why is it that Lian Cheng Bei Ming is not getting out? Considering Lian Cheng Bei Ming, Lian Cheng Bei Ming says if Lian Cheng Bei Ming doesn't know that he should leave them alone. After a few yards, Lian Cheng Bei Ming is seen really being startled when he hears Lian Cheng Bei Ming referring to Coco Ming, to which Coco Ming is asking him to lead the way to the port, since she cannot find it. Lian Cheng Bei Ming says to her that she should not walk around and stay with her boss, then she won't get lost anyhow. However, he on looking at Lian Cheng Bei Ming, ponders if every man becomes childish like him after they fall in love with a girl. There. Lian Cheng Bei Ming notices Lian Cheng Bei Ming's response to which he responds within himself that rather than these two lovers, he is the one interfering, so he should better leave right away. Lian Cheng Bei Ming, as so, takes her and walks the path. But upon their next visibility in another scene, they both are somewhere away from everyone and intimating as Lian Cheng Bei Ming kisses her. Coco Ming calls him a bastard and he doesn't look at the place or anything and just goes to do it. When Lian Cheng Bei Ming in response says to her that now she called him a bastard, he will show what a bastard can actually do. However, 
He is about to do the thing with her, to which Coco Ming is extremely hot, as she even says it by herself with the activating hormones inside her will. She asks him not to proceed if someone passes by. However, Lian Cheng Beiming, just before he does the thing, refers to Coco Ming about the next time after they go back to their own place, he will try his best to satisfy Coco Ming. Coco Ming, at first, because she is kind of unconscious, says okay, but right away, she asks what he means by next time, as she now understands that the thing will be done at the present. Well, no sight of Lian Cheng Beiming and Coco Ming for a while, until they appear, and Coco Ming's face could easily be judged that something fishy has happened as she is thought of herself being a lascivious girl who did it outdoors. Lian Cheng Beiming, looking at her, says that she should not worry because tonight she will be with him as well. She shuts him up as she says that she doesn't need him to stay with her. However, as they walk ahead, Coco Ming notices that she is hearing people and a crowd from a little distance. The noisy place seems to have a gathering to which Coco Ming ponders. He even steals the thunder of President Beiming. Ye Beiming here corresponds and says the prince, the so-called prince, the legendary Juixio Zhan, who is the president of the Four Seas Group, whose presence was seen in the earlier episode of the Manhua when Lian Cheng Beiming and Coco Ming were on the island. However, Coco Ming here, on knowing the prince's presence, wonders that the Oriental International is their home court for this fact, so they should keep a low profile. She tells Lian Cheng Bei Ming to let's just get on the boat because he is wearing long sleeves in this hot summer weather, it must be hot for him. However, just as they both walk towards the ship, someone from the back calls out to Mr. Lian Cheng Bei Ming, and Coco Ming looks back and corresponds to someone she knows. It is her? Well, guys, here we are to set up another new mystery to be revealed. This story is quite fascinating and amazing by the looks of it, and by the storyline as well. Make sure you rate us with your feedback, and do let us know about this story as well. The rest is for you to subscribe to our channel for more daily updates of such manhwas and hit that notification bell turned on. Thanks.